On this day in 1985, Celtic signed Mark McGee from Hamburg. The 6th of November is a portentous day in the history of Celtic, marking as it does the anniversary of the meeting at St Mary's Church Hall in the Carlton at which the club was formed in 1887. As a birthday present, most Celtic fans were at best ambivalent about the signing of Mark McGee. It's fair to say that Mark McGee was not well liked on the Celtic Park terraces during his time at Aberdeen. He had a habit of scoring regularly against Celtic and this was compounded in his last game for the Dons, the 1984 Scottish Cup final. With Celtic trailing to a suspiciously offside goal, in the 38th minute McGee ran at the Celtic defence and was stopped by a clumsy challenge by Roy Aitken, with McGee sent sprawling before writhing around in apparent agony while Aberdeen players surrounded referee Bob Valentine demanding a red card. Valentine gave them what they wanted and Celtic played the rest of the match with 10 men. Paul McStay scored a late equaliser for Celtic, but the 10 men ran out of steam in extra time and after Pat Bonner flapped at a Gordon Strachan cross, Mark McGee was waiting at the back post to slam the ball home. From being in his death throes after Aitken's challenge, he went on to win the sponsor's ironically titled Mr Superfit Award for Man of the Match. There's no doubt Mark McGee was one of the best strikers in Scotland, winning the SPFA Player of the Year award in 1982 and gaining four Scotland caps, scoring in a 1-1 draw against England at Hamden in 1984. But after an injury ravaged 14 months at Hamburg, there were question marks over the fitness of the 28-year-old, who cost just £150,000 after leaving Aberdeen for more than double that figure. The deal earned Hamburg more than that though, as it included a friendly between the sides at Celtic Park in December 1985, with the Germans taking the gate receipts. McGee told Ian Paul for the Glasgow Herald on the 7th of November 1985, I think it is the fourth time I have been near to signing for Celtic, but when the chance came 18 months ago, I felt it would not have been fair to Aberdeen or Alex Ferguson, who had done so much for me, to go to their biggest rivals. Now, after spending that time in Germany, it is different and nothing would please me more than to pip Aberdeen for the title. It wouldn't be Aberdeen they pipped. McGee's debut was a disastrous 3-0 defeat at Ibrox on the 9th of November 1985, Celtic's third 3-goal league defeat in a row. He scored his first two goals for the club the following week on his home debut, a 2-0 win over Clyde Bank. His next league goal proved to be absolutely vital that season, a 69th minute equaliser against Hearts at Tynecastle, without which there would have been no Love Street 86. Mark McGee scoring against Hearts became a recurring theme of the next few seasons. By the end of season 1985-86, Mark McGee had become a peripheral figure and played very little part in season 1986-87, scoring only two league goals due to a combination of injury and loss of form. He also found it difficult to break up what was a brilliant strike partnership in Brian McClare and Morris Johnston, and Alan McAnally had jumped ahead of him in the queue. That all changed in the summer of 1987, when the departure of all three of his strike colleagues left him as the only recognised centre forward left. He stepped up and formed a good partnership with new signing Andy Walker in the early part of the season, leading the line and chipping in with important goals, including a late winner against Hearts at Celtic Park in the first home match of the season that rather upset Hearts chairman Wallace Mercer, whose complaints after the game effectively ended the top flight career of referee Kevin O'Donnell. The signings of Frank McAvenny and Joe Miller during the season reduced McGee to a supporting role again but he continued to haunt Hearts, scoring another late equaliser at Tynecastle to salvage a point for 10-man Celtic in November, and an 88th minute equaliser in the Scottish Cup semi-final in April, shot through a forest of legs on the goal line after Henry Smith dropped the ball. Two minutes later, McGee out jumped Smith to knock the ball down for Andy Walker to score a sensational winner and set up the centenary season double. It was only in his final season, 1988-89, that Mark McGee finally won over the Celtic support, stepping in for the injured and out of sorts Andy Walker and forming a great partnership with Frank McAvenny, who then left in March 1989. 
A real turning point for him was a hat-trick in the pouring rain in a 7-1 win over St Mirren on the 8th of October 1988. Ian Paul wrote in the Glasgow Herald on the 10th of October, Relationship between player and fans is impossible to explain, other than that some gain an instant rapport with the troops, others never cross the invisible bridge between field and terracing. Mark McGee has taken three years to find a way across, but he has now established a link which might prove as firm as any he had with the supporters at Pitodre. A goal against Rangers in a 3-1 win in November 1988 didn't hurt, although by this time Celtic were so far behind in the league race there was little possibility of retaining the title after a horrible start to the season. It wasn't long before chants of, he's fat, he's round, he's worth a million pounds, Mark McGee, were greeting his every contribution. Another two goals against Hearts in December confirmed his Hammer of the Hearts nickname and there was an inevitability about his winner at Tynecastle on the 11th of March 1989. He captained the team and scored Celtic's goal in a 1-1 draw against Liverpool in the Dubai Champions Cup, a short-lived fixture between the champions of Scotland and England on the 4th of April 1989. Celtic won the penalty shootout 4-2 and as the fixture was never held again, the trophy McGee held aloft is still at Celtic Park. Mark McGee's last match for Celtic was the Scottish Cup final of 1989, won by a solitary Joe Miller strike in the blazing sun. That summer, after finally showing the fans his best form and finishing the season as the club's top scorer with 19 goals, he left under freedom of contract and returned to Newcastle United, where he had had a short spell from 1977-79 to 79 before signing for Aberdeen. Mark McGee played 113 games and scored 34 goals for Celtic, winning two league titles and two Scottish Cups from 1985 to 89. Not a bad return for a player who took three seasons to find his best form. <laughs>